the last time we spoke about network topology, um, we talked about the OSI model. If we talked about wireless media, some of the interfaces that existed. We've spoken about all of these. Um, I gave examples of how the certain network devices look like. Um, so in today's, we're going to talk about the types of networks. Let me quickly mute all of you. In a class of about 280 something, you have only 83 people. Where are the, two, two, the remaining 200 students? All right, don't be expecting. You think I don't see get attendance from here? Okay. Um, all right, I'll pick the attendance from all the Zoom lectures that you've had. If I don't see your name in there, then it means you're not getting your 10 marks. All right, so let's start with today's activity, which is um, the types of network. The last time I spoke about um, networking, I told you that the reason for networking is mainly to share network resources or to share resources. And there were types of the three, we had three main types of network topology. I spoke about the, the bus topology, the ring topology, and also the, the star topology. So these were the three main network topologies that existed. Then I mentioned the mesh topology, which was a combination of these three topologies. In today's um, activity or today's lecture, we're going to talk about the types of networks. Uh, let's pick the first one, which we term as the local area network. In some cases, you would hear it as LAN. Uh, local area network. So it's a network of computers and other devices that is confined to a relatively small space. Um, such as one building or even one office. So just like when you go to a cafe, I think now we don't really have cafes. When you go to a cafe, um, it's just a, a little, a small building with so many computers all connected together, about five, 10 computers. So you can have a local area network, even comprising of two, <laughs> two computers. Once you're able to network them together, it can serve as what we call a local area network. So if you have 10 computers, assuming I have 10 computers in my office, and I want to connect all of these computers together, um, the first thing I will have to ask myself, what type of topology am I going to incorporate? And the best topology that we normally use is the star topology. Now, once I have this topology in mind, then, Per infrastructure, I would have to connect all these cables to maybe a router. I explain what a router is, or an access point, or a switch. So once all these cables connect to the switch and get themselves connected to the individual computers, then we can term that as um, a local area network. So those of you who do not remember, this is how the that topology looks like. Um, this is the star topology. This is how it looks like. So in, a, in an office, that's like in my office, I can set up a star topology network with all 10 computers together with probably a printer connected to the, um, the switch or the router. Okay, so that is about it. So once I have the topology in place and I've been able to do this connection, we term that as a local area network. So when you hear of a local area network, it is a network of computers and device, other devices. So it's not only computers that can be hooked onto a network. So any device that is able to connect to a network, that device is called um, a network device. Or any computer or any device that is able to be um, get itself connected to a network, we call it a node, N-O-D-E. All right, so LM LAN is a network of computers and other um, devices that are confined in a relatively small um, space. Of course, it's not always a small space. On campus, we have a local area network. So for instance, um, School of Petroleum, where my office is, 
as a local area network. Then um, library also has its local area network. Computer science department has its local area network. KT has a local area network. So that tells you um, we have so many local area networks on campus. Now we can combine all these local area networks on campus and also term is still as a local area network, mainly because it is more or less in a geographical, um, the same geographical location, just as you might. So we can say the University of Mines and Technology has a local area network. So more or less, we can have a sub-local area network. Let me put it that way. Now, um, this um, local area network that we normally term, it was, um, IEEE developed certain standards and terms that we call um, IEEE 802. And this standard is what helps us to connect our PCs and all our computers and phones to a network. So IEEE 802 um, came out with this term, and that is the standard that is being used to help us get ourselves connected together. So it's a family of standards for local area network and metropolitan area network. So for instance, um, in the metropolitan area, so like Accra metropolitan area, Kumasi uh, metropolitan area, you see that spans a huge geographical location or area. You know, it's not confined to just a small place like humans. Takradi, um, or Takradi, Shamaa Hunter East metropolitan area, stuff like that. So that is a big, you know, geographical location. So if you have, so for instance, um, we have a local area network here and we have another local area network at Esikado. So a combination of these two, if they are linked together, we can call it a, a, a metropolitan area network, more or less like that. All right, so there are five types of lands which normally, which is normally being used when we talk about um, local area network. These are the ones and the, and the standards that IEEE comes with. The contention bus, we have the, the token bus, we have the token ring, we have the Wi-Fi, we have the WiMAX. Now the Wi-Fi, that is 802.11. Most of the time, anytime you connect into a Wi-Fi, this is the standard that we normally work for. So 802, we have, these um, types of land. Now, I would want you to, if you have a question, I just put it in the in the chat. I would talk about it. Um, um, Sadia, yes, thank you very much. Uh, so that I can continue. Yeah, contention bus. Uh, so now, what I would want you to do is know which of these, each of these, and the respective standard that comes with it. All right, so when we talk of a wide area network, it's a network that connects two or more geographically distinct lands. Uh, most of the time we call it one. So that is a wide area network. So the metropolitan area, like for instance, in the, uh, the example I give, UMass has a, a local area network. Um, Esikado has a local area network. There are two different places. If it's in, a, in an, a, a metropolitan, we can call it a metropolitan area network. Sometimes we can also term it as a wide area network. So because they are at two geographically um, different locations. If they are in the same metropol metropolis, metropolitan, then we can call it um, metropolitan area network. Now, in fact, uh, most organizations use one to connect separate offices, whether offices are across town or across the world from each other. So for instance, um, Ghana Commercial Bank has a local area network at their branch here at Intakwa. They also have another one in Accra. Now, how are they able to talk to each other? Um, they're able to talk to each other mainly because of this wide area network. They are, mind you, when you talk of wide area network, the key word is the geographically distinct lands. So there are two different places. They are not at the same place. So generally, whenever we, you, want, you want to do some transaction, you want to maybe make a deposit or withdraw money from your bank account, what you have to do is to go to the bank, you talk to the teller, 
your data is somewhere located at the head office of Ghana Commercial Bank. So your local area network is able to talk to the server which hosts your data, which is somewhere in Accra. So the local area network in, in, in Tapa and that of Accra can come, they form what we call the wide area network. We can, assuming we have one in Tapa and maybe one in Nigeria, it's also could, uh, could term as a wide area network. So the internet is an example of a very intricate and extensive wide area network that spans the globe. So we can have so many of these wide area networks coming together to form the internet. So in actual fact, um, if this, this is one connection, there's a local area network with these devices in there. So here can be Takwa branch, and here can be a Cicado branch. So that is a local area network for a Cicado. And they are connected together with what we call the router. I told you the router um, is a device that is able to move um, people from one network or devices from one network to the other. So this is one network. This router is able to help us to move our traffic from here to another network, which is in a Cicado. So that is the essence of the router. So this is how um, it looks like. So you can have two local area network combining to form a wide area network. That is also very possible. Now, um, comparing LANs and ones, these are some of the characteristics that you should have in mind. So when we talk of the geographical area of coverage, for a local area network, it is localized possibly in a building or group of buildings or campus, like the explanation I gave. But for one, for one, which is a wide area network, it spans an area ranging in size from city to globe. So it can go beyond long distances. In terms of data transmission, um, typically um, the data that is being transferred in the local area network is between four megabytes, megabits per second to 16 megabits per second um, with a high speed ethernet and fiber optic based cable. So I told you that on campus, we have fiber optic cable coming from the ICC units to each of these buildings, the SPET, KT Hall, Main Administration, Auditorium. There are fiber connections um, that, um, that, that has been created. And these are the speeds that typically the data um, transmission rates falls with. For a wide area network, um, it normally operates at or below T1, or E1 transmission rate, which is between 1.55 megabits per second and 2.048 um, megabits per second. In terms of error rates, um, local area network, this is the error that it normally presents with. Um, ownership usually with um, the implementer. So whoever implements, who owns the local area network? If we have one on campus, it is UMass that owns it. It's not being owned by anybody. But when you talk of wide area network, the communication carrier contains um, ownership of the line facility. That is the ISP who does the connection for you to be able to do this connection, to talk to each other. We have the data routing, normally flows, follows fixed routes. So whatever happens, happens within a network, which is um, localized. Switching capabilities of a network allow dynamic alteration of data flow. That is for a wide area network. In terms of topology, usually it is limited to bus, ring, tree, and also star, and um, or star. So we also have the virtually or limited design capabilities. Um, so with the wide area network, we can virtualize some of these topologies in a way that is feasible for its usage. So types of information that is carried most of the time for a local area network, things that really happens, uh, data that pertains to the organization that is primary um, to that particular organization. So data is more or less first hand. And we have all of that in the local area. Network. For a wide, these are the type of uh, information that is being carried most times. Voice, data, video, commonly, uh, the ones that are integrated for a wide area network. Now on the, the internet, you know, if you recall, I said a company, all, a lot of these ones coming together, they form the internet. So in the same way, um, uh, 
All right. Um, Sadia said uh, he's confused about the difference between the node and the network device. Yes. Um, any device that has the capability of being connected to a network is a network device. Now, when we talk of a node, a node is a device that is connected to a network. So once that, that particular device is connected to a network, then it's, um, it's a node. So for instance, my laptop is connected to a network. So my laptop will serve as a node on the network. Um, my printer currently has not been connected to a network, but if it has this, the capability to be connected to a network, then I can say my, my printer is a network device. So that is the difference. Um, so um, Sadia, that is, that is it. Um, Sheila, um, what is the difference between one and man? I, I don't know if I've been able to explain it. If not, what I mean is man is a metropolitan area network. So if you are in Kumasi, Kumasi metropolitan area. So that spans a huge area, geographical location. So if you are at Ahojo in Kumasi and you have in your house, you have a local area network and somebody is probably at Tech. He also has a um, local area network and these are connected together. Ahojo, somebody's house in Ahojo and somebody's and, and KNU West connect all to get connected together. Then we can tell us at a metropolitan area network because I believe they are all in the same metropolitan. So that is metropolitan area network. Now for the wide area network, you could be at Kumasi and um, a network could be in Kumasi and another network could be in Takradi. These are two different places. They are not in the same metropol metropolitan. So we will term that as a wide area network. I believe I've answered your question, Sheila. Um, aside the router, which other device can we use to connect to um, two lands? You can use a switch to connect two lands. So you recall I talked about bridging, um, but um, bridging. So you have a, a, a switch, and you have another switch. You were able to connect these two to get connected. So that is um, you can use that one. There are certain switches that have, we call them money switches. They have some capabilities of doing things that could be very similar to a router. But generally, when you want to move from one network to another, then you would use what we call the router because it is more centered or more capable of doing that. Um, Benedict, what is the difference between router and hub? I, um, a router is a device that is able to, okay, a router can be in two ways. You can have a router which is software based, meaning you can, it's, you install it as a software. You can also have a router which is hardware based. Now, the picture I showed you the last time, um, that was a hardware based router. Some of the ones that you see on the, in your classrooms, I told you those ones are access points. The, the routers are the ones that's when you connect to automatically gives you um, access to the network. Now, I can use my phone as a, a router. The moment I put on my hotspot, the phone will give anybody who connects to my, host, my hotspot gets an IP from my phone. In this case, there is a software, is a, there is a router-based software. There's a software which is serving as a router, which is on my phone. And that is what is giving IPs to um, devices that connect to it. The moment you connect to it, the PC will give you, my phone will give you what we call a local area network. So the IPs that will be given to you, or if you have five computers connected to my phone, all will be given what we call a local area network. So my hotspots, will, my phone will serve as a router, giving me a local area network. But I will not be able to go onto the internet if my data is not on but I will be connected and will be able to talk to each of the computers that are on the, route, um, on the local area network that has been connected, that has been created by the router inside this phone. The moment I put my, host, my data on, data that can go onto the internet, then all these pieces of computers that are connected to my phone will now have access to the internet because the phone serves as a router which has a local area network 
takes you from the private local area network to the internet, which is a public area network. So that is how routers work. Now the hub is just like the switch. The switch is only, the switch or the hub, most of the time is only meant to be able to connect you to a network, not the internet or not any other network. The switch only gives you access to be able to set up a local area network. So once you have a local area network, it, means, it doesn't mean you can go onto the internet. You need to have something we call a router. And the router has the capability of moving you from one network to the other network. And that is how you are able to go onto the internet. So most of the time, your, hotspot, your phone has a software-based router. That is what is able to give you access to go onto the internet. So that is about it. All right, so now the internet is a network of um, networks that use TCP IP protocol. It is similar to the enormous um, one. So, so many ones can come together and form the internet. So it's more or less like the internet serves as the, the mother and the ones coming in together will serve as the, um, the daughter or the, the, the child. So the internet can also be defined as the worldwide network of computer networks. That's gather together to share information, resources, and technology. Now, um, these are the devices. You recall I told you about expansion slots from previous classes. So if you buy a desktop, sometimes the desktop does not come with a TV card. So if you want to have a TV card on your computer, you can connect um, these PCI <clears throat> TV cards onto the expansion slots. That extends, that gives you more capabilities. Now, in the same way, when you buy a laptop, it comes with a wireless as, um, card or a, um, a network interface card. That is what gives you access to the internet or the network. Now, for desktop computers, what it comes is with is the, the LAN ports. This is the RG45 ports where you put those cables in there. So by default, desktop computers does not come with wireless access. So if you want to have access to your desktop without using the cable, but using the wireless capability, this is, these are examples of wireless cards that you can use to connect your PC to. We have the PCI one. So the desktop will have a slot where you can put in this expansion slot where you can put in this to install your um, wireless card. This is also an example. So the moment you connect this one and you install the driver, then your Desktop computer can now be, be will now be able to connect to a wireless connection, so you have access to the internet. So these are all examples of wireless cards, wireless cards and network cards. I'm RJ45. So for computers that does not have the RJ45 ports, you can have the USB one. You can buy them, and you can also have a USB wireless connection. So they are all available. Now the internet and the World Wide Web. Um, I hope to finish this today. Uh, the internet, as, um, as the name says, in fact, most of the things that we is here, uh, we are about, we know about. Internet as a name, uh, conspicuously um, suggests, can be defined in joining several network or large network of networks. It is geographically distributed computers coming in together to form a network. So computer networks are two or more computer computers linked or connected together by cable, phone, fiber, microwave or radio satellites. The computer, the computer is participating in the internet on the internet or global or globally or publicly identified with a unique IP address. So if you want to connect to the computer, I told you the router or the access point will give will give you an IP address. The router will give you an IP address. The IP address is what uniquely identifies you on the network. So for instance, your VLE server has an IP address, which is more or less like a public IP address. By public IP address, I mean to say that wherever you are in the world, publicly, you can access it. That is how come you are able to access your, your, the VLE wherever you are, even if you are at your hostel. Now, it is very easy for you to remember something like www.umat.edu.gh. It is easy to remember the names of people than remembering the number, the phone numbers of people. So what happens is on your phone, if you pick your phone and you want to call Isaac, for instance, what you can do is 
you go, I, I, if I ask you, you know Isaac, you save his number on your phone, but you don't have his, you don't have his number off head. But you remember his name to be Isaac. So you go to your contacts and you look for, you type Isaac and I, all the Isaac will come and you select the right Isaac. You see how easy it is to remember the names, but it is a little difficult to remember the phone number. So in the same way, we have something we call um, Uniform Resource Locator, which is URL, which users can use to search for things like www.u.umat.edge.ga. This is the URL of UMAT. And this URL, it is very easy to remember than the IPs. So every, every um, website address, like Google or all websites, Facebook, they have something we call an IP address behind the scene that is stacked to it. So when you go to google.com, um, computer does not understand google.com, but it understands zeros and ones. And the zeros and ones are the IP address that is attached to it. So when you go to google.com, it is converted to IP address. The IP address is also broken down it's in, in, in tens to zeros and ones, which is binary for computer to understand. Some of these things, um, it's a little technical, but I believe you understand what I mean. The wide, the worldwide is a, a architectural framework for linking, um, for accessing linked documents spread, um, spread out over millions of machines all over. So um, we have the, like this yuma.edu.gh or the VLE learning or vle.edu.gh, yuma.edu.gh, um, it, is a, it is on a computer and it has the files all located on the computer. So it's part of the World Wide Web architecture. So the World Wide Web, where the web is also often called a system of internet service that supports a collection of documents. The VLE has the documents of the assignment that we have given you. So all these things are stored on it. So I will be able to assess it when you upload it online for me to see. Now, how do you get connected onto the internet? In fact, this particular site, I'm going to leave it for you to go through it yourself. Uh, but I will explain briefly. If you want to access the VLE, you, you pick up your phone, you type VLE, um, VLE, it goes onto the VLE server. Now it serves the information to, to you for you to be able to um, see maybe the login of the VLE for you to enter your login details. Once you log in, it goes onto the server again. Then you are, you are previewed to the information that is on the page or the class that you want to find information in. So that is a general thing, but I would want you to go through and see how it also works for this particular slide. All right. All right, um, these ones are a little self-explanatory. And so when we talk about um, browsing the internet, um, you understand, browsing, surfing the net. When you, um, to begin browsing or surfing the internet, you must have the following. You should first of all, get connected onto the internet. And by getting connected to the internet, it means you, you should have an ISP. If you are using Vodafone, well, MTN, it means your ISP is MTN, Vodafone, ISP is Vodafone. So ISP is more like the institution or the company that gives you access to the internet. So ISP stands for Internet Service Provider. Um, and once you have, access to the internet, you should need, you need something we call a browser. The browser is what gives you access to connect onto the internet. These ones, you know, there are a lot of browsers that exist. Um, Mozilla Firefox, Chrome, Safari, um, Tor browser, there are a lot of them. Um, searching for information. If you are looking for information on the internet, there are two main ways of searching for it. search information um, over the internet. And we normally search information through the browser, Emmanuel, in Kebi, if you can write your question so I can read it. Um, the first step, so for search engines, that's like Google that we have, and we also have portals. Um, this is the second way to access information on the, on, um, to use. A portal is a server that contains directory of several servers on the internet, and this is based on the category of information available on the servers. The, the funny thing is, the introduction of some of these AIs is going to find a way, in a way might find ways to relegate or push some of these um, 
things, you know, behind the scene. But of course, it's it's work in progress. In progress. Emmanuel Asante, please type your questions. And what is the difference between browsing and surfing? It's the same thing. There's no difference. If you are surfing the net, it means you are browsing the net. So it's the same thing. So emails, electronic mails. E, the E stands for electronic. So emails, an email is a form of mail delivered over the internet. And it's like a paperless um, letter to go through directly from one computer to the other. To get emails, both the sender and the recipient should have an email address. So <laughs> just like a snail mail, if you want to post something to somebody, um, you should know the address of the person you want to send to. And if the person also wants to reply to the information that you've sent, he should also know the address, your address to be able to reply to your message. So in the same vein, when we talk of email, um, emails can be created. The good thing is we have companies and organizations that are giving us access to the email. So Gmail, virtually all of us have Gmail, especially those that use Android. And, and now, all of you um, also have an email that is institution-based. So that is the one that we create for you um, to use whilst you're on campus. So the examples of companies, the organization that gives us access, Yahoo is an example of an, of, of, of an organization that gives us access to free email. Um, so when you want to access Yahoo email, or let me use Gmail, for instance, you go to gmail.com, then you enter your username and you enter the password. If you want to sign up, you go to gmail.com. There's a portion that says sign up. Sign up means register with us. Sign in means you are already a, reg um, a registered member. Now log on to, because you are a member, you don't need to sign up again. You just log on with the details that you gave us previously when you signed up. So if you want to send a mail, you go on to gmail.com, you enter your login details, you get the interface of the Gmail, um, your Gmail account, then you're able to send mail to as many as um, over 100 people at a time. So where you see the two, um, so if you are sending a mail, the two portion is for the person you are sending a mail to, we have something we call CC and BCC. The CC stands for copy. So for instance, if you want to send a mail to me and you want to copy um, we are Faye Johnson, for instance, you and if you know his email, you send a mail to me and you copy we are Faye Johnson. So in that case, we are Faye Johnson will be able to see the mail that you sent to me. Now, if I send a mail, you send a mail to me, and you BCC we are Faye Johnson, then it means we are Faye Johnson will not be able to, um, I will not be able to see that you sent the mail to we are Faye Johnson also. The only thing I will know is, I will notice is you sent the mail to me. So BCC stands for blind carbon copy or blind copy. CC stands for carbon copy. So just like receipts. You go to the bank or you do certain things. If they are giving you a receipt, you will have carbon copy put in between the paper. So whatever you write here is shown at the other side of the page. So that is carbon copy. So CC stands for carbon copy. So if you want to send a mail to me and let me know that you also gave a copy to Yafi Johnson, then you need to use CC. So if um, Gosway, for instance, also wants to send a mail to um, Emmanuel and Ketia and Perry, Gosway would have to, if you, Gosway wants to send a, a mail to Perry and also Emmanuel um, Asante in Kebi, and he doesn't want Perry to know that um, he sent the same mail to Emmanuel in Kebi, what he has to do is he will send a mail to, um, he doesn't want Perry to know. So he will send a mail to Perry. So the two section, he will send it to Perry. And the, the BCC section, he will send it to Emmanuel Inkebi. So Emmanuel Inkebi will see the mail. 
But Perry will not know that that mail was addressed to him alone, but it was also sent to Emmanuel Nkebi. So that is um, how the blind copy is. So with a blind copy, you hide, um, you don't let people know that you also copied those people in your mail. All right, so that is about blind copy. So the explanation is what I've been, I've given, I, I, I give. So if you go through this, you should be able to understand what I mean. Attaching files. Now you know how to attach files because you have used how to, you, you use the VLE. So that is how it also works. I'm working with folders. So for instance, in my email, assuming I want to be able to, you know, save all emails coming from maybe Janet Asante. Maybe Janet keeps sending me emails all the time. I can create a folder in my email and all Janet's email will be sent to, I can push them to a folder which, is, um, which has been created by Janet. Janet, I can see you are relaxing on your bed. You are enjoying. All right, so when we talk of trash, Trust is just um, working with folders. We have the inbox, we have the drafts, we have the sent. The inbox is where you receive the mail. The draft is assuming you are sending an email to Janet. And for instance, um, you didn't finish sending the email. You just started it and you stopped and something came up and you went away. It is saved in drafts, just like your VLE. If you upload one file, it goes on to drafts. If you upload the other, it goes on to draft. So until you are done submitting all the four files, all your files will be in the draft. But when you click on send or submit, then it goes to, it comes to me and you will not have access to it. So in the same way, when you send an email, the moment you click on send, you have about, sometimes you have about three to five seconds to change your mind. If you don't change your mind and it goes online to the person, that is all, you can't, do anything about it, the person will see the mail. So any info, any email that you have sent to people will be seen in the sent inbox. The trash is where, or um, deleted items is where info, um, emails that you delete will reside. The bulk is the first, the first time you receive emails that's a spam, um, that the spam guard utility, in fact, this one is not normally we normally tell as a junk mail. So sometimes we we'll also say spam. We will see a junk mail or a spam section. So sometimes your email service providers are able to, you know, see mails that are very similar. So they are able to know that, oh, this email is coming from, um, it's a junk mail or it's, it's, it's a way to lure you to do certain things. So they are able to see that this is a phishing email and they will put it at your, your spam. Now, if you can see, this is an example of um, an email. And these are the inbox, the start. The start are the ones that you know, are very important that you, you might want to see. If the email is so important, you can start it. And anytime it comes up, you will see it. The snooze, if um, snooze just like how your phone is, you can snooze and um, you can snooze, have a snooze in there. Um, importance, in fact, all these are examples that you can go through. You can create folders You can see I have a label called Twitter that is taking up all my Twitter information. Um, Christopher says, sir, please, with BCC, is it that you don't want the person to know the sender of the message? No. For instance, now um, I'm working in a team with two people and I'm sending a proposal to a company. Maybe I'm developing a website for a company and I, I, I'm sending a proposal to the company, but I worked in a team with maybe two more people. Maybe I worked with William and um, Obey Notary in developing this proposal. Now the proposal is done. I went through the final submission, did all the corrections. Now, if I'm sending the mail to the company, the proposal to the company, um, I would want to copy William and Obinotri. I don't know if it's Otiriwa. I want to copy them. So, but I don't want the company to know that these are members of my team that I worked with when um, coming out to the proposal. 
So I would blind copy them. When I blind copy them, the company will only see that I send a mail to him, to them, but they will not know that I sent it to um, William and Obin, um, Ochiwa or Ochiwa. I'm not so sure if it's Ochiwa or Ochiwa. Yes, the company will not know. So that is how the blind copy works. So blind copy, if you don't want the recipient of the email to not know that you've also sent the mail to other people. For instance, I give you an assignment and one of you, don't do this, so God's way, don't ever try this, or all of you. If I give you an assignment and you are sending me, you've done the assignment and you are sending it to me. If you send it to me, I, would, I know you've sent it to me, but if you send it to me and you blind copy your other friends, so that they will also look on your assignment and, and do the same thing and also submit to me. I will only know that God's way has sent me the email. I will not know you copied it. You copied Benjamin and you copied it. Hey, Benjamin, are you watching a movie whilst I'm teaching? Hey, Benjamin, I'm going to subtract 10 from your marks. You are watching a movie whilst I'm teaching. All of you can see that Benjamin is watching a movie whilst I'm teaching. That's interesting. All right, so that is how the blind copy works. All right, thank you, Johnson. Yes, yeah, so the BCC hides those that are receiving the messages without the knowledge of the person, the actual person who is meant to receive it at the two session when you compose the email. All right, so creating folders, yes, um, I talked about it. Moving folders, you can just drag them um working with folders so when you are done sending the email you can sign out so that is how it works um so this is the end of lecture six or uh, yes usually if we were to be in class i would ask some of you to summarize but unfortunately we are not in class all right thank you very much i had a wonderful time with you um this semester of course i'm not this is not the last session I'm going to meet you in class from next week for the presentation. Make sure you dress beautifully and lovely and come and present. I'll give Max for being nicely dressed. If your group is nicely dressed, you know, I would give Max for all of that. Um, yeah, and do your best. The topics that has been given you, please do your best to come out with a very nice presentation. You've, you've gone through PowerPoints and all of that. I would love to have some interesting you know, time with you in class during the presentation. And yes, whilst you're presenting, when you are done presenting, I give the chance for people that are seated to also ask questions. And the idea is to, you know, just to build good rapport with some of all of you, you know, amongst you. So please get yourself ready and let's meet next week for the presentation. Have a good morning. I'll see you in class. I think there is a class right after here. So please 